Hello and welcome to another live code hangout. Today we will be working on the Western Friend website. Source code is here on GitHub, github.com slash Western Friend. Got an issue here, co-assigned to protect our registration and possibly other forms such as our contact form. Today I will be looking at the registration process. We've got a plugin called Django registration that's doing the heavy lifting for us. So mainly I will just be following these instructions. We'll see how that goes. And optionally, we might look at using some sort of a captcha like Django captcha plugin or the wagtail recaptcha, um, which GT coder is working on in a separate pull request. So I kind of want to align with their work, but they're focused on the contact form. I'll focus on the registration form. So I've got a branch here and I believe we, uh, I'm just checking our user registration form here. I think if we were to add a CAPTCHA, you would um, just add the field here. But for now, we're not gonna do that. So here's our core URLs. We have a registration form where we implement the registration view and use that custom user form. The rest of it, the registration flow that is, is handled by this these two paths where we've got overlapping accounts. This is per the documentation, so there shouldn't be any collisions. Django registration backends currently a one-step URL. You just register and you're already signed in and your account's activated. That's good for prototyping and quick um, development, getting out of the beta stage. But now we're ready to uh, have actual users register. We should verify their email at the very least, and if possible, verify that they're not a bot, you know, not only by the email method, but probably by adding a CAPTCHA. For better or for worse, that's just what we <laughs> kind of have to settle on. So I think the only change we need is to use activation URLs instead of one-step URLs. It's a very small change. Let's see. So let's make sure the database is running and run the development server. And we'll hop over into the development server now. There may be some templates I need to implement, but it looks like I'm already logged in, so let's hop back out of that and register okay so this is using our same registration form one issue hopefully it should use the um, console back in for our email so let's say test user ah <clears throat> i've created a few of those number two. Oh wait can't click in there Hmm, interesting. Man logged in. So, unfortunately, that didn't work. Just switching. Let me check this form a little closer. I think it's supposed to use a registration form. I mean, this is pretty much. Yeah, that's that. That's correct. Ah, uh, that's. We just need to subclass the right view. All right, no problem. So one step. All right, so there we go. We'll go to back end, and views. Okay, registration view, two step. So it's also called registration view. I think if I just change the import back ends, activation, and then we'll have the right flow. All right, <laughs> it's pretty cool that you can override it as easily as that. It's just the documentation is not super uh, clear and we've had to customize like how to customize it. It says you can, but it would be nice if it had the more holistic uh, documentation about examples. This is more reference documentation, but it's not very good tutorial yeah, or example. What is that called? The C4 documentation framework? No, that's how you diagram. Um, this diatag. Taxes. Yeah, so it doesn't really have much of this. It's got almost completely a reference. This is a bit of a, okay, it's a bit down here, explanation and reference. I'm looking for this oftentimes. Uh, I've been doing Django for a while, but I still need tutorials like anybody, right? Uh, tutorials are helpful in how to do specific things like how to implement this or override it. That'd be cool. Now, granted, I could also contribute to the documentation efforts in that regard. So I'm not trying to complain, but just kind of realizing the the difference between these types of documentations and how um, fully fledged projects should try to balance, try to find themselves balanced within here. So we've got a little bit of everything. 
and not leaning too much into the theoretical knowledge. A lot of practical steps. In fact, if you're going to lean one way or the other, probably lean to the practical side and then supplement with theoretical knowledge to kind of balance yourself. Hmm. That would be my philosophy. Okay, so I am going to register again. <clears throat> and we'll just see if we're missing some templates now. Okay, it did mention the settings, so I should be reading docs. I was I'm kind of assuming that these would have defaults, but that was not a good assumption. You know, if you're going to have a, a configuration variable, give a default. I know the number of days for registration could be a sensitive one, count activation days, but a default value of like three, that's pretty good. All right, so core settings. Now, these are relating to registration. Registration salt. Now it does have a default registration salt, so I'm just going to use that in any case. Now we've got our variables, so I should be able to try again. Interesting. Oh. <clears throat> there we go. Now, I'll probably just read the docs on this one. Quick start guide has required templates. Here's a registration form where we can add the capture later. I'm going to refresh my tonic and lime. I'll be right back. Camera's not frozen. Tonic and lime refreshed. All right, we've got registration form, registration complete, registration close. Okay, here's our activation failed template. Just a message or an error was encountered when activating this account. We'll display the activation error to dictionary. Well, I'm not sure how that'll print out, but hopefully it'll be useful. Please contact the site administrator. Okay, <clears throat> activation complete is fairly simple. Activation complete, your account has been activated. I'm not sure if at this point they'll need to log in. I might add a little bit more detail there after I test this out. So the activation email subject text. Must be a single line. So activation email subject, we can use this expiration days. Please activate your westernfriend.org account within expiration days. And then the body will have more information. I will need to construct a URL for this. This is an example of how this documentation is lacking the pragmatic or practical steps. It's giving me the information, the explanation and reference. Here we're more in the reference zone, but it's not telling me how to do it. I really just would like to know how to do it. I know it differs between sites, but a simple example, particularly since I'm not deviating from the documentation. I'm using the same URL structure and everything. So, you know, if you don't deviate from the documentation, then uh, an example, it's easier to give an example here. So I'll have to I 
have to figure out which URL, which route to send them to, right? I'll leave this open. And what I might be able to do is use Copilot. So I'll see if Copilot has this tacit knowledge. Please generate a link for the user to copy and paste into their browser that uses the activation key and correct URL for the registrations, Django registrations account activation view for the given scheme in sight. Essentially all this should be able to, or revert, I can get the reverse for it. Reverse would probably be better. So we'll try to use Django reverse URL. All right, let's send that. It's thinking about it. I'm sure somebody, there's an open source project out there that's done this. There we are. It's a plain text, so it unfortunately won't be something that they can click on. Registration activate, activation key. Okay. Request get host, request scheme. I don't know if that's gonna work. because we're not handling a request. Man, see this, I just, a simple tutorial would be really helpful here. Activation email body.txt, Django registration. So they have an example. Oh, interesting. This must be the context variable. Well, dang. Oh, I just noticed these are the same. URL registration activate activation key without oh, it's a relative url okay well you know this is not super cool but it's essentially i just dude i just highlight here go western friend hard code this and we're going to use https so yeah and i can just copy and paste it and take off the western friend part i sort of disagree here i think we should be using the um HTML to give people something to click on. I don't think people have a widespread disp antipathy towards all this. You know, most browser, uh, most email clients support links, and I think people like to click links. So, browser interoperability, what do they say? The interoperability aside, I think using a minimal subset of HTML, like anchor tags, is fairly common and easy to do. I don't think you should completely. <laughs> Um, disallow HTML. This is kind of a weird decision. All right, so we'll see if that works. We'll continue down. I guess that's that's it. We've made it down the list. All right, so cancel that. We'll go back. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. We'll just check our URL structures here. There we go. All right. Mm. So it's trying to send an email to the user, but apparently that said. Either something I need to implement or something that's been deprecated from Django. Mm. Now, it could be that we're inheriting from the user model, abstract base user or something. Let's close a bunch of things out. Everything out. Counts model. And perhaps we should inherit from a more uh, rich user model, but the abstract base user seemed to be pretty good. Django, uh, so we would look for Django email user or, yeah. See where that's defined, contrib auth. Yeah, and a custom user model, okay. Ah, there we go. So Google is sort of, quality is diminishing. So. Let's 
It's a bit old answer, 2016? Let's try it. Let's check out the other models here. Permission. So I'm thinking, because most of this is not necessary. We don't need a short name, full name, mm, clean could be useful. The reason is we're only collecting the email. We're not asking for a username. We don't need a username validator. Maybe I'll add this date joined. So I could either just inherit from this and set things to null or none, or copy and paste. I don't really like that, but okay. Let's, let's bring some of this over though. So yeah. And Django has his own sort of time zone, I think. Time zone hand. Let's see where it got the time zone from. Django utils. did this it knew I was gonna need that get text oh yeah yeah I do like this clean method oops let's see uh, well yeah we'll put that here and yeah it's still complaining that you cannot override class variable previously declared on base class abstract base user with instance variable my boy okay I don't know and the thing is now we can implement the email user Give my import. Yeah. Okay, so the we don't need the email to be marked as required which I think is why I overrode that. So I will just commit the migrations separately. I guess it doesn't quite matter. Yeah, I didn't want to didn't want to stage everything. It's kind of weird. the user clean and email user methods now we can
log in here real quick and see if I can answer this. old and we're in the class abstract user And yeah, I just have like so we need the send mail and the abstract base user imports. Let's try again. Forget to migrate. Now we'll run the server. Try again. Okay. Now we get this text email in our console oh but it says registration successful ah yeah yeah okay that's true except <laughs> they need to check their email so I just need to update this text but first let me refresh my tonic and lime got the fizzy So yes, the registration, it was successful in that there's a user account, but the account is not active. So um, or activate your account. Activate your account. We have emailed you instructions to activate your account. So it comes like this, and we get a link that I can copy and paste. Let's just copy it and paste it. The only problem, because I'm copying and pasting, is the URL is hard coded. I'm also noticing two slashes there. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. So with just HTTP and local development, activation complete. Am I logged in? No. So that's the other thing we can <laughs> tell them they can now log in. All right, so just some more minor changes to the text. Yeah, so I have to find the URL for login. Mm, that's under our core template nav bar, for example. Ah, let's try that. You can now log in. Virtuation. You can now log in, log in, log in. 
Yes. And I guess this is okay. It's kind of narrow. However, on the login for for small screen, it should be all the way across. For example, if I view this on a mobile device, yeah, there we go. I like that. And if I'm on a, an, uh, let's see, a tablet or like an iPad, oh, I don't like that. Hmm. Let's try that. Medium 12. So basically, there's a little bit better. I don't need the medium here. The breakpoint will automatically handle that. But just for whatever reason. So we're on the iPhone and then I switch it just to responsive mode. Yeah, that's pretty good. Email, password. I don't know, they're super long. You know, actually what would be nice is if it was centered. That's not what I'm here for. Yeah. Okay, so let's test this out one more time. I need to change, need to change the text for the email body. So I don't need that slash and I can use the hard coded URL. Yeah. Register. Got email. Okay, so now we've got another email here. I'll copy and paste it so that I can edit. Oops. And we'll edit the URL here. Okay. Activation complete. Your account has been activated. You can now log in. Takes you to the login page. All right. You know, it's first pass. So we're at minimum usable at this point. I could publish this and people could use it. So let's see. We will commit the changes in a kind of meaningful order. So we'll publish the branch, create a pull request, and for now, I'm trying to think if I should close or just relate it. Eight seventeen. Because if I close it, then we haven't done the other protection. Now, the registration flow is a decent first step protection, but I think bots can still abuse it, at least in terms of generating a bunch of you know, like spam users that never get activated, but maybe also in activating users. So I believe the CAPTCHA is going to be a necessary addition here. We'll take a break here at about one hour in I'll do some research offline and see how we can merge GT coders pull requests that they've opened. We'll look at it at that in another session and then see if I can kind of align uh, our capture usage. So we're leveraging what GT coders added and then I can add it to the registration form. Okay. So this has been another live code hangout. If you'd like to check out the changes we made during today's session, you can check this pull request, number 928. If you'd like to get involved with this project, we have a bunch of issues where we could use a little bit of help. Most of these are fairly small, and a lot of them are good first issues. And we're also participating in Hacktoberfest every year, although that's now passed. But yeah, you can hop by our GitHub repository and look for these good first issues. All right, well, thanks for checking out the live stream. I hope you're doing well and have a great day.